In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to translate every single part of your WooCommerce site. Your visitors are even going to have a fancy language switcher they can use to pick their preferred language. We're going to set up automatic translation through Google Translate and you'll see everything you need to know from front to back. Hi, my name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab and let's get started. This WooCommerce site right here is currently in English. We've got a language switcher in the bottom corner. We can switch it to Spanish. So we have our mini system here on two lines. We can easily adjust that. But the point is, it's in Spanish. Some things aren't yet, because I'm going to show you in this video how to do it, like this headline here, the text in the search bar that goes away when you click on it or when you start typing. That text can be translated as well. All the WooCommerce emails can be translated. And we're doing it all with just one plugin and maybe some extensions if you want to upgrade and have even more capabilities. But I'm going to show you how to do it with just one plugin, the free version, and we're going to get pretty far. So let's switch back to English. The first thing you want to do if you want to follow along is install the plugin. So let's go to the dashboard. Let's go to plugins and add new. You want to look up multilingual WordPress. You can also look up Translate Press. And this is the one I'm using right here for this video. It has 300,000 plus active installs, four and a half stars, compatible with the current version of WordPress. All those details check out. It's a great plugin to use. I've been using it off and on for years. Once that's installed, under settings, we have a translate press option. Click on that. Here, we set our languages. With the free version, you can do two languages. The default, which in my case is English, and the additional, which in my case is Spanish. With the paid version, you can do up to, I think, 221 languages, which is a lot. And that's a lot of translating work you're gonna have to do. So we add languages here. Once we do that, that gives us the language switcher that we see in the bottom of our website here. So that defines the language switcher and the languages that appear there. Then we go to automatic translation. Here, we can enable automatic translation. By default, it's turned off. To turn it on, change this drop down to yes. Click on either Google Translate V2 or DeepL. Both of these options do potentially come at an extra cost. They have a free tier, but if you go beyond the free character limit, then you have to pay for the translation. Luckily, you only have to translate your pages once. Once they're translated, the information is stored in the plugin and in your WordPress database, and you don't have to translate those again. However, every time you create a new page, you have to have that translated too. So that might incur additional costs, but again, you only do it once. So the costs are definitely affordable to make your site multilingual. I want the Google Translate version too. I put in my API key right here. There is a full blog post I'll link to in the description down below that walks you through how to get this API key, but I'll show you really quick right now as well. So we log into our Google Console account at console.cloud.google.com. And when you come in here, you'll be in the dashboard, which looks like this. And we're gonna to want to create a new project. In this drop down up here, just click on that, click on new project, give the new project a name. You can add to an organization if you have organizations set up in here. The project that I'm using for this video is called Translation. And this is the data for the Translation API. And you can see I've got some usage here because I've been translating and this costs money. Once you have a new project, we go to APIs. You wouldn't have any enabled APIs here yet. So what you do is you search for Translate and the one you want is Google Cloud, or sorry, Cloud Translation API. This Manage button says Enable, if you haven't enabled it yet. And to enable it, you have to add your credit card. You're prompted to do that and it walks you through how to do that. And then you've enabled it. And if you're getting value from this video, let me know by liking it and subscribing and leaving any questions you may have in the comments down below. Now let's get back to it. And then once it's enabled, if we head back to the homepage for the translation project, and then go to API Services, we have the translation one enabled. Once we've done that, we can go to credentials. Here we can create an API key by clicking on create credentials, API key, and it gives us an API key in a moment. Once this is done creating, there it is right there. Then you just copy and paste that into this field right here. Click on test API credentials and it tests it to see if it works. And that's it, that's the whole nine yards. But like I said, there is cost involved to translating, but you only pay it once because you only translate the site once unless you're adding new languages steadily. But once that's enabled, we can click on translate site right here. And this is where the magic happens. This is where the translating happens, which in this case is the magic. So any anything on this page, we can hover over it and a pencil appears. Click on that pencil. And then if we go down here, we see Spanish as the translation here. And you can change this. Maybe this isn't the exact right term for a Spanish-based WooCommerce site for the All Products tab. So if you know Spanish or you know someone who does, you can change this to whatever is the correct term to put in here. But the auto-translation gives you a start. And if you don't know the language, 
it probably gets pretty close to what you need in the auto translation. If you had more languages set up, as in you had the premium version of Translate Press, you have from English or from the default language, you have two Spanish, two German, two Italian, two Mandarin, all the way down up to 221 languages, which is a lot. It's a lot of languages. You just go through the site and you click on all the pencils and you add all of the Spanish translations. And even up here, this isn't a link, but it's a 24 seven customer service helpline is the text. And this is what it appears to be in Spanish. You could probably change that because it's, it's, it's spelling out 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Whereas this is just 24 slash seven. Servicio al clientele, I feel like is customer service. And maybe 24 seven is not a thing in Spanish presented in this fashion. I'm gonna assume it is, but maybe it's not. So I've changed the translation that it provided us. I'm gonna click on save. And now when we go to the Spanish version of the site, that text that we have right here is gonna appear right up here. We can click on the logo and we can change the logo to Spanish. This is the English version of the logo. Maybe in Spanish, there's a different version of your logo. Up here, the search products placeholder, click on that pencil and we can update this to whatever the correct one is. The auto translate didn't catch this. And so we have to do this manually. Personally, I just go to Google translate, paste this in there, get that one back, paste it in there, save, let's add the three dots, the ellipse as it were, save that. And now when we switch to the Spanish version, this is going to show up to prove that to you. Let's go back out to the website. Let's change to Spanish. And we see right there, is our translation and there is our updated version of 24 seven customer service. And that's how easy it is to translate to any language that you want to. And then we can translate this headline right here really quick. That, paste it in there, save. And we can go through and translate the entire website like that. But there's more to your website than just what you see on the page. That's where string translation comes in. Under string translation, if you have the pro version, you can update all the URL slugs. For example, if you have a page on your site that's your homepage forward slash running shoes, but running shoes is not the Spanish term for running shoes. You could translate that URL string using the paid version. That's not in the free version, just the paid version. And that's super handy for SEO, changing, being able to change the URL slug. If you're all about SEO or you think it's important, you're gonna to wanna to upgrade to get that option. Under get text, we can translate things that our plugins and themes are adding. Whenever you come in here, you wanna click on rescan, especially if you install plugins and change themes and change um, various things on your site. Whenever you come in here, you wanna rescan it just to make sure that you have the most up-to-date content in here. To edit any one of these, click on edit and it's all translated to Spanish and you can change these just as we did before. And these are all things that are, you know this one, howdy so-and-so when you're logged in, right up here, howdy Bjorn. These are all things that appear in the forward-facing website but they might not be immediately visible to you who's going through and doing all the translating. And so it's important to have all these strings and we have 15,000 different items in here. That's a lot of items to go through individually Luckily, with the automatic translation, it's done most of the work. And so you can just come in and double check. So the automatic translation is super handy to have. There is an additional cost to that, but it might be worth a few bucks to not have to update 15,000 items manually. That's just on this tab. We also have the emails tab. This is where we translate the WooCommerce emails. I'm gonna rescan this just to make sure we have all the latest things. And this will pull in language packs for the emails. A lot of WooCommerce emails are already translated by WooCommerce themselves. So when you translate to Spanish, it's gonna pull in the language packs for all these emails. And so you don't have to do as much work. So I recommend you go through and change all of these strings after you've customized your WooCommerce emails. What I mean is if I go back into our dashboard here and we go to WooCommerce and then settings and then go to emails, these are all the emails that WooCommerce sends. The first few go to the admin and all the rest are customer facing right down here. And if you click into any one of these, we see placeholder text, we see actual text like this one here, and we can edit these to our heart's content. It's just the default that we have in there. So you wanna edit these to be how you want them to be, and then come back into here after you save all your emails, rescan your plugins and themes, then those strings will appear here and you can translate them. You can translate all of the text from all of the emails in WooCommerce and it's actually pulled them all in right here. Just go to edit any one of these. You can see it already did the automatic translation for most of these. So all you gotta do is come in, click on edit and then find the ones it didn't do 
translate those with Google Translate or do it yourself if you know the language, and bada bing, you're done. And you also might have noticed throughout these sections, we have a domain on the right hand side, and it can be different. WooCommerce, default, depending which plugins you have installed, there could be Elementor or Divi or Block Builder, there could be all kinds of domains. If you want to do just translations for very specific things, you can go to this filter by domain and just choose WooCommerce. There's a WooCoCommerce as well. I don't know what that is. Click on WooCommerce and assume that that's the only WooCommerce on here. And now we have 108 items and it's just from the WooCommerce domain. So if you don't care about translating absolutely everything, this is a good way to reduce your workload. You also have the option to turn on the regular tab. This is not on by default. And this is what pulls in a lot of content on your site that's not visible on the front end. Some of it's pulled in the other tabs as well, but this is focused on content that's not easily visible on the front end. To turn it on, go to the settings for Translate Press, go to Advanced, go to Debug, and check this box right here. And that turns on the regular tab, where are we? Right here. And this is often things like form fields that have placeholders, things that are not easily translatable in the translation editor up here, or things aren't even visible in the translation editor, that's where you do this. You can also filter these by individual string, same as before, click on edit. The automatic translation has done a lot of the work. Then you just come in and add the translations as needed. And if you want to create a Skookum WooCommerce site, check out this playlist right over here. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't waste any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.